Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopefully elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indian and Haitians, that give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Reka, Quadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well. And a sincere salutation to all the occupants pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the hopeful elect. And shalom to the Akwaf who are listening and learning. The few sisters who are listening and learning. And my Zarya coming at you with another lesson in true facts, faith, and edification. Another daily edification. Lord's willingness be edified. Now this is another update on the fall, the crash of Babylon the Great, North America, Mystery Babylon. The collapse of Babylon the Great. Just another update that you don't get from your local news. So Lord's willing, this be edifying. World headquarters of RT American, our nation's capital. Hello again, everybody. I'm Rick Sanchez. Let me first take you through a global wipe fest. Wipe is the TV term, by the way, for one video effectively pushing out the other video. Here we go. Wipe one. Haiti. 42 people have been killed protesting government corruption there. Let's go to wipe two. Hong Kong. More violent protests over the weekend seem to directly tie the demonstrators to the United States, so says Beijing. And wipe three, Iraq. Protesters are now trying to infiltrate the infamous green zone where they are being met with actual live gunfire. We're going to break down the rage in all three of those places for you, but we're going to uh, begin with what uh, could become the biggest problem that's facing America today. And, it, and it's Now, what it just showed you is uproars of the people that's going on around the world. Hong Kong, you got Chile, Haiti, Paris, okay? Uproars of the people that's going on around the world, man. And they were just protesting in Minnesota as well. Uh, the anti-Trump supporters, okay? The Lord said, when you see, when you shall see uproars of the people, man, okay? And prophecy is playing out. It's barely being talked about, but it really is. All signs but this is the main topic right here. Or worse, being around the corner. And how do we know that? <laughs> the Fed's actions, that's how. It is literally cutting interest rates, what, three times now? Even hinting of another round of uh, QE, quantitative easing. You, you, you don't do stuff like that unless you're really worried, right? The kind of quantitative easing is them printing more money, okay? Which is nothing back in the dollar. Nothing. So they're printing more money, man, for nothing. Economists agree that they're worried. And if they're not worried, they should be worried, right? So what will likely trigger the recession? Experts say it's going to be this trade war with China. No doubt about it. But wait, didn't China bail us out the last time that there was a, a recession? Huh? The last time there was, we called, what was it? The meltdown it was called, right? Last time there was a recession in the United States, who bailed us out? Most people don't know. China. Yeah, the answer is yes. China. China rescued the United States economy during the meltdown by buying our treasury bonds, essentially buying our debt, right? So it wouldn't be there anymore and we can get more, which is what they did. Now, think about that. Think about what China did last time as you hear China expert Suya Gupta talk about the U.S., verbally lambasting China last week. Because once the recession comes, you will have to go back to China to ask them to have fiscal stimulus for the global economy. And China did it in a big way in 2007, 2008, but also learned some negative lessons and it's not going to do it a second time. Do you hear what he just said there? He said, quote, he's not going to do it a second time. He even did this little thing with his finger, right? He's not going to do it a second time. China's not going to do it a second time around. If that's true then what, right? Think about it. If we can't bring down interest rates because they're already so darn low, 
if we can't borrow more because the debt and the deficit are already kind of maxed out, and if China comes in and, and, and says, look, you guys started a trade war with us, therefore we're not going to bail you out this time around, then what? Hmm. We're getting ahead of this story because sometimes you, you got to look ahead, especially when the consequences can be so dire. This is the news with Rick Sanchez, where we believe it's time to do news again. Our list of the questions we think you're going to be asking tomorrow. Why did China buy our debt and why might they not ever want to do it again? Will a Boeing exec flying on his own plane convince you, okay, it must be safe? <laughs> And does President Trump have the right to, quote, keep Syria's oil or take? Same thing, really, right? But we kick off our A block today with something that we should all be concerned about, a coming recession, which seems more and more apparent with the passing day. Economists say the only question is when and how severe is it going to be? Now, let's take the second part of this first, how severe, right? The answer to that question may have to do with our the tools that are at our uh, disposal to get us out of said recession. One of those tools is China. Following the economic meltdown of 2008, China paid trillions and trillions of dollars to buy U.S. securities, essentially keeping the United States economy during a tough time afloat. Surab Gupta is a China expert. He's with the Institute for China American Studies. Fascinating conversation we had last week. You left me thinking about this whole China situation having to do with the fact that they may have bailed us out in 2008. And you're saying, or at least possibly, if we go back to that well, it may be dry to find. It will be dry this time around. You know, in 2009, uh, China was part of a huge fiscal sim stimulus, mm -hmm. which of course benefited its own economy. $3.5 trillion, I think. It, it was a large, exactly, it was a large sum because the U.S. put out $700 billion, remember the Obama stimulus, and right. that was kind of peanuts in comparison. Yeah. Uh, but the China Chinese also realized that that huge stimulus they put out also kind of unbalanced their own economy and exacerbated their already old growth model, which was based on excess investment. They needed and need to transition to a more consumption and high productivity-based growth model. And that's why over the last couple of years, particularly the last two years, even as the Chinese economy is doing poorly, they have not provided stimulus to their own economy. So what you're saying is that in an effort to help us, they kind of hurt themselves somewhat. To some extent, they, they don't want to do it again. They will not want to do it again because they're not even doing it to themselves at a time when they could do with some help on the stimulus front. Everybody needs a rich uncle, right? And everybody's always thought we were the world's rich uncle. And our president makes it sound like we really are. We're not. China is. They're our rich uncle, aren't they? Yes, China is America's rich uncle. And China is happy to play the role of America's rich uncle to keep have an intertwined economy which provides a ballast to their larger bilateral relationships. So let's go through the equation of what happens if there is a global recession vis-a-vis -a, -vis a very severe recession in the United States. Some people saying it's going to be worse than a recession. So we have already lowered interest rates, right? Uh, we have pretty much uh, gone into our uh, deficits and our debt uh, by printing money. Uh, we did that last time. And Which the debt for North America is over $400 trillion, man. Okay, then when you go to the debt clock, when you pull that up on Google, it tell you that the debt is like $22 trillion. They lying, man. The debt is over $400 trillion, man. Okay? And you heard them tell you, man. China bailed them out the last time, man. Okay? For the recession in 2008, man. And if we've already used those two tools... And now we turn to China, and China says, sorry, we got nothing for you. What's left, Surab? There isn't much left. You know, China is one of the... F There's nothing left, man. Isaiah 47, 1, the Lord tell Babylon the Great, right? The virgin daughter of Babylon, the Chaldeans, okay? 
Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughters of Babylon, man. There is no throne for thee. Hey, they, listen, North America is in debt, man. Few countries which still has fiscal space to put out this sort of stimulus to reflate the global economy if things come to that, to such a pass. But the Chinese realize, I mean, this is not something automatically they will do. And especially if they're at the end of a lot of cursing from the American side, what is in their interest to yeah. do so? Yeah, uh, they have been abused of late. Uh, I think Mr. Pompeo's comments last week seemed somewhat bombastic. You and I have had conversations about this. but So let, let's, again, go through this equation, right? The United States is in a recession. They try and get themselves out by printing more money, but there, there's hmm. not a lot of room there because we've already done that so many times. We try hmm. to bring down interest rates, but there's not a lot of room there because we've already brought it down to almost zero. Right. We're going to turn to China, but China doesn't have money. My gosh, this could be a pretty serious situation. I guess what I need to know from you is... What would be the situation for the average person watching this newscast in America? How would it hit Main Street? Let me frame it this way. Uh, each of the previous recessions has had a very significant impact on U.S. domestic manufacturing. We are going to see job losses out there which will not come back to U.S. manufacturing. Did you hear that? We will see job losses that will not come back. Hey, that's why we watch the news as watchmen. Right? And we filter everything through the news, through the scriptures, man. You heard what he just said, man. Job losses is not coming back. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 3. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. The keepers of the house are who? The ones who control, who control the jobs, man. Okay? And the strong men shall buy themselves. Who are the strong men? The elites. And the grinders cease because they are few. What does that talking about when you say the grinders cease because they are few? Talking about the jobs, okay? And those that look out the windows be darkened. Who is those that look out the windows? The elites, man, okay? The ones who control the entire uh system of uh the corporation of our uh, uh companies jobs okay it say and those that look out the windows be darkened and the doors shall be shut in the streets why because there ain't gonna be no jobs man when the sound of the grinding is low okay that's how my work ain't gonna be no jobs and he just told you man okay So in important political pockets, we are going to see severe job losses and movement of production capacity out of this country. That and if you've been keeping up what's been going on in North America, it's been over hundreds of companies shutting down, man. Okay, Sears, Sam Clubs, Walmarts, all type of businesses been closing, man. Okay, uh, just in the middle of this year, Sam Club fired over 100,000 people, man. Okay? I did a lesson on it a few months back. Uh, people that were, uh, you had people that worked for um, Sam Clubs, went to work. They didn't even know, man. They went to work and found out that, they, that the store that they worked at was closed, man, was shut down. Okay? They didn't even tell them, man. It's been a lot of companies been shut down. Oh, uh, Cat. The company that make all uh, these back holes, these um different um um machines that they use on construction sites, hey, they they've been shutting down, man. Okay, they losing money, man. Hey, it, North America is collapsing, man. That is going to throw up a lot of foul political rhetoric, which will further exacerbate the political narrative mm. out here and give further spur to protectionist forces populist forces and all sorts of i would say that's what gets people like trump elected that's what gets people yeah. like trump elected and you're going to see next time perhaps a trump just a more slick talking person like trump but mm -hmm. perhaps more dangerous than that so we should hmm. be 
ready that that sort of a situation could happen at some point down the line. I get it, yeah. yeah. So the situation is really bad in the country. People are desperate and they turn to anybody who comes along with answers, even if it's fake or false answers. Yeah. Here's the question. If there is this recession, who is better equipped to be able to uh, get out of it sooner? I imagine the answer again is going to be China? Oh, absolutely. It's going to be China because China is already going through a downturn at this point of time as we speak and it's not reflating and stimulating. It's trying to get beyond its downturn by making productivity-based reforms. And so when that next global recession comes or when it really strikes America, China will have already passed its cyclical downturn and will be making that investments for the future in strategic industries, 5G, advanced manufacturing, etc., where the U.S. would want to make those investments but will not have the money to. So China's more poised or better poised to be able to handle the onslaught of a global recession, you know, perhaps more than just about any other country, yes, and that's what they're that's working right. toward. Yes, that's, that's right. a fascinating conversation to look ahead, but I think, you know what, we should be doing this. If not, it's going oh, to catch absolutely. us by the short at hairs. The, at this point of time, it's essential to be, to be asking these questions. Surab Gupta, thank you, as usual, good stuff. You're welcome. Ezekiel, chapter 7, verse 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord Yahweh. You people thinking Jacob Trump ain't coming in Jeremiah 37? Well, it is. If you think the Lord is all about love, you're wrong, man. According to the Bible, the words of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. He's finna bring judgment, man. They shall not satisfy their soul, neither fear their bowels. But it is the stumbling block of the iniquity, of their iniquity, okay? They shall cast their gold and silver in the streets, man. Babylon the Great is in so much debt, man. This is Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 6. Should not all these take up a parable against him in a touch of proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increases that which is not his. Who did that? Babylon the great man, Mr. Babylon. They go around the country because they had the greatest military. Right now, they in over 150 countries, man, taking resources and minerals and doing what they want to do because they have the greatest military on the earth for the moment. It say, <clears throat> woe to him that increases that which is not his. Because all they do is take, man. Like John 10 and 10 say, the thief come not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, man. Woe to him that increases that which is not his. How long? And to him that laden himself with thick clay. When you go to this word, thick clay, laden, it's talking about the debt that North America has, man, okay? They in so much debt, man. What they saying? They knee deep in debt, man. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 11. How ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut down. All they that buy silver are cut off, Okay? All you rich elites, all that's going to be cut off from you in that day, man. This is James chapter 5, verse 1. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Do you hear this? This is the words of the Lord, man, speaking through the prophet James, man. James 5 and 1. Go to now, ye rich men. Talking about the elites, the bank owners. The Appenheimer, the DuPonts, the Gettys, okay? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your miseries. Woe to him that increases that which is not his. Your riches are corrupted. And your garments are moth-eaten. Your garments, all your, your, your Armani suits and your way of living, okay? Your fine linens, all is moth eaten, man. Your gold and silver is what? Corrupted, man. 
Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Okay? Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasures together for the last days. But guess what? The Lord say, your riches are corrupted, man. Okay? Babylon the Great is crumbling like, like bad cornbread, man. tonight to report that protests have heated up around the world. And let's take you through it. Haiti, 42 people were killed over the weekend as Haitians continue to kick to the streets to protest what they call a corrupt president. And they add that he is a U.S. puppet. The U.S. counters the claim. Now let's go to Iraq. The protesters are breaching the Green Zone, the infamous Green Zone, the area established by the U.S. military as a safe zone, remember? Look, let me read this. Hey, this is Lord. This is uh, Amos chapter 3 and verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Question mark. Shall that be evil in a city and the Lord Yahweh have not done it? Hey, anything that's going on in these cities, man, these uproars, this is the work of the Lord, man. This ain't Satan doing this as what the plantation Christianity teach, man. Okay? These wacky Christians. It ain't Satan, man. This is the work of the Lord, man. Uh, that regular Iraqis are not supposed to enter. The protests are rooted in long-standing grievances over poor governance, official corruption, and a lack of economic opportunity that has festered, by the way, since the U.S. invasion of 2003. Oh, my God, look at those videos. Wow. Now to Hong Kong. Scores of people there have been injured, one in critical condition, and at least 12 people, 12 uh, police officers, I should say, had to be treated for injuries as the protest turned riotous once again. Over the weekend, Beijing continues to accuse the U.S., of being behind the protest while the U.S., the problem has more to do with Beijing's policies. Why is this going on? Because every nation is sick and tired of the bully destroying their countries. Who are the bully? Esau. But the big international story on this day may have more to do with Syria. Them Lots red men. have always found ways to co-op or... <laughs> Hey, let's face it, simply steal the natural resources of smaller countries, right? But what do they do? John 10 and 10 reads, The thief come not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Okay? That's what the thief do, man. Listen to this. Habakkuk. You heard what he just said, man. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 5. It say, yeah, also because he transgressed by wine. Who? Esau. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. Who? And lodgeth his desire as hell and is as death. He's the harbingers of death. And cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people, man. Okay? Micah 2. And two, and they covet fields, who Esau, and take them by violence and houses. Who go into other countries and take them by violence? North America, Babylon the Great, Esau. And they, and they take them, so they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Who does these things? Esau, Babylon the Great, North America, man. The Dutch did it, the British did it, the Spanish did it, the Japanese did it. Oh, let's run that back. I don't think you heard me. 
I don't think you heard me. Let's run that back. Beijing's policies. But the big international story on this day may have more to do with Syria. Large countries have always found ways to co-op or, hey, let's face it, simply steal the natural resources <laughs> of smaller countries, right? <laughs> the Dutch did it, the British did it, the Spanish did it, the Japanese did it, and others have done it historically. And at the... Who are those? Edomites, man. St. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. This is the words of Yahweh shot. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Who may have life and more abundantly? You so-called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. Because the Heavenly Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh shot who the world any called God and Jesus, they only care for you so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, man. Okay? But the thief is who? Esau. At least throughout the last century, it has been more the domain of our country. Right. The U.S. has shown a penchant for resource depletion, let's call it that. Babylon Usually, the Great. It's done under the guise of security. Right. Or, or pretending to help a country by giving them some needed loans. But now this is right. different. See, President Trump seems to be defying that conventional way of taking resources from other countries by simply <laughs> announcing for all the world to hear that, quote, we're just going to keep the oil. Right. Keep the oil. That's right. The oil in Syria. He says, the president, we're just going to keep it. Let's begin our coverage tonight with two people. We Why are they going to keep it? Because it is right here, man. I just read it to you. Michael, chapter 2, verse 2. And they covet fields. What fields? The oil fields. The poppy fields. Okay? And take them by violence. And houses. And take them away. So they oppress a man and his house. Even a man and his heritage. They took our heritage, man. We have uh, former Pentagon official Michael Maloof, who's going to be taking through the analysis of this, or taking us through this analysis. But uh, we're going to begin with news Rick Sanchez, special correspondent Michelle Greenstein, to kind of set the table on this. What, what did he mean? What's going on with this story? Sure. So just like you almost mentioned, two weeks after Trump ordered 1,000 troops to be withdrawn from northeastern Syria, it seems like he actually changed his tune. He's saying uh, with the announcement that the U.S. soldiers would actually be staying in Syria to, quote unquote, secure the oil fields. So it's funny you mentioned security because we're still seeing these claims of security, but it's not about the people. Now it's to secure the oil fields. He says that he intends to make a deal with ExxonMobil or another company uh, to gain this oil, which may seem like a trivial comment on its face, but then you have to consider that Syria is actually a sovereign foreign nation. So let's take a listen to how he made that announcement. We are leaving soldiers to secure the oil. Now we may have to fight for the oil. It's okay. Hmm. Maybe somebody else wants the oil, in which case they have a hell of a fight. But there's massive amounts right. of oil. And we're securing it for a couple of reasons. Number one, it stops ISIS because ISIS got tremendous wealth from that oil. We have Look at the red it. man. Secured. If that ain't Esau, who is it? President say that the oil under the soil of a sovereign country simply belongs to us. It's a Why? Because they covet fields, man, and take them by violence, man. Okay? Amazing, and what may be even more amazing is that is that then we saw the corporate press just parroting these talking points, and we hmm. saw them herald this decision wow. as, "Hey, the U.S. is going to be staying in Syria again to be protecting the oil fields." That's how it got reported. And Mark Esper, the Defense Secretary, even confirmed that these troops will be remaining. He says that again, we're going to be retaining control of all the oil fields in northeast Syria. Let's take a listen. Hmm. This will remain in the towns that are located near the oil fields. The purpose of those forces, a purpose of those forces, working with the SDF, is to deny access to those oil fields by ISIS and others. <laughs> So it's interesting because ISIS and others would seem to include the Syrian government, who under international law, that's actually the, their oil fields, right? And the Russian foreign ministry says that the U.S. is already smuggling crude oil worth $30 million every single month from the occupied Syrian oil fields. And when they announced that, they said, hey, why is the U.S. Listen, Babylon the Great, North America is destroyed, man. 
Okay, all they got, hey, they gotta, they gotta go back to using the sword, man. That was Esau's blessing, man, to use the sword to take what they want, man. North America is in a four hundred trillion dollars of debt, and it could be more than that. And they don't have nothing but the sword, man. Okay, so now they're using their military to take what they want. They've been doing this since the beginning, man. Okay. You go all the way back to Cain, man. They have been taking what they want. Who was Tubal Cain? What was he, man? He was a person that made weapons, man. Okay? The blessing of Esau was to live by the sword, man. This is their blessing. And no one is more better at the sword than Esau. Values and the rule of international law at the same time that they're pumping oil because this is, you know, Syria's natural resources. But let's take a look at the Syrian reaction because this is actually possibly the most interesting part. Um, President Bashar al Assad, he said that uh, he thinks that President Trump is actually the best U.S. president so far. Here's exactly what he said He said he's the mm. best American president, not because his policies are good, but because he is the most transparent president. Mm. What could be better than a transparent foe? That's an interesting comment. I was just thinking about that as we, as we bring in our uh, colleague and our expert, uh, Mike Malou, former Pentagon official. There is something almost more benign about a president, unlike other presidents of the United States, who have basically done the same thing, but not just blurted it out right. the way Mr. Trump seems to be saying it, right? Right. He's been very blatant about it. Uh, and I think that uh, what, what Assad said, of course, was said with a, a high degree of sarcasm. Right. But but the the reality is is that this is this is more important than just the U.S. taking over oil fields. This is setting international precedent, mm -hmm. which will allow other countries absent the U.S. to go in and just take uh, because of that precedence under international law to take over whatever they want to in other countries like. Sudan taking over the, the oil fields in South Sudan. What's going to stop them? They can point to this as a justification because the U.S. has set that precedent. Under international law, precedence and possession is nine-tenths of the law. And this is what... This but, you is know, it's problem. funny because what you're talking about is process, right? Yep. And what I'm saying is... I've seen the United, oh, all of us have seen the United sure. States do this, the Dutch do this, the sure. British have done this, the Spanish sure. used to do this. Sure. Countries do this all the time, yeah. but they do it under the guise of, you know, we're helping you with loans or we have to secure your country. Well, and then, but this guy's just saying, look, the hell with all those excuses. We're just going to take it. We're the right. U.S. We can do it. We're the big dog. This is, this that's what he so do, man. Basically appealing to the neocons. And, and because they, because we can do it, we have the power. Who's going to kick us out? Mm. Nobody right now. Is going right. To that's why the power is, is so important. And that's why people like Assad, people like... And that's why Obadiah 1 and 7 is say all the nations, all the people that were at confederacy with thee have deceived thee and brought thee even to the border, man. These other countries is tired of you. It's tired of you red men. You are uh, you Esau's going to their country, taking doing what you want to do, man. Okay, that's why the Lord is putting the spirit on them to shoot the missiles on you people, man. Okay, to shoot the missiles over here to Babylon the Great. Like the uh, Russia and others should be clamoring before the United Nations Security Council about this because of this kind of a precedent. It's 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 a, it's a terrible precedent, and the U.S. is. In a country where it was never invited, taking over possession of a resource which does not belong to them, it's it's theft, hmm. and this is this is unacceptable in in today's world. That's a strong word. I just read to you a thief now, come not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. At least thirty percent. It's theft, like he just said. Land currently, right? Yeah. And the Washington report, uh, Post reports that that's where ninety percent of oil production in Syria took place before the war. So, can you talk a little bit about mm. uh, how crucial regaining these oil and gas fields are for the Syrian government when it comes to you know its reconstruction efforts to rebuilding its social programs? Yeah, well, the 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 oil revenues from the oil was going to be used for reconstruction. Mm. The United States has cut off all reconstruction <laughs> funds on its own and has sanctioned other countries. Hey, that want to, uh, Babylon the Great, man. Hey, but Esau ain't playing no games, man. Hey, they take what they want, man, when they need it. 
okay? That was his blessing, man. To live by the sword. That's why North America, Babylon and Greece had the greatest military, man. For the moment. Okay? That's why all the other nations is going to join together to shoot their missiles over here, man. Because Babylon the Great, North America, is the biggest bully on the schoolyard, man. And what happened to a bully? I always use this analogy, man. What happened to a bully on the schoolyard? What happened to the bully, man? Somebody eventually knocked the bully out, man. Okay, and guess what? It's going to be Russia and China and North Korea and Iran. They're going to all join together to knock this bully out. Babylon the Great, man. Because they sick of her, man. This harlot. Contribute to reconstruction in Syria. So, in effect, what the United States is saying is that they're for regime change. Also, they're also for partitioning. They are for partitioning Syria. This is what's coming. What it's coming down to. So that by by possession like this, basically the and in effect, the United States is doing it. Uh, Joe Biden once talked about this as a policy to basically partition Syria. It seems to me that for Mr. Trump, everything is politics, right? I think you're onto something here when you say this is great for the neocons. Mm -hmm. He thinks he'll get more votes by sounding tough mm -hmm. without really taking into account the repercussions of this on a global stage. But I thought one of the most things in the soundbite that Michelle just played for us, I thought one of the things that was most interesting was when he said, if somebody doesn't like it and they want to fight us for it, bring it on. Right. Is he really telling Russia, is he really telling uh, everybody in that part of the world, we want to fight you. We're ready to go to war with you. Is that hmm. what he's saying? That's what it sounds like. And nah, he ain't ready to go to war with Russia. Going to war for you just mentioned that this is great for the neocons. Another entity that's come that comes to mind is Israel. This would also be great for Israel. So I want your expertise on what would partitioning Syria do for Israel? Is he because looking? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. That's well, a great well, question yeah. she raises. Is he looking for that fight? In North America and Israel are the two main places that's going to be destroyed off the earth, man. Okay. They're going to be wiped to powder, man, by the by them ICBMs, them intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. It's going to destroy North America, all of it, man, and all of Israel, man. Well, it, 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 this, the Israelis back the Kurds, and, 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 and if the Israelis could do it, they would help the Kurds. This is laying a foundation, basically, for uh, separating the Kurds and everybody else from uh, from from the rest of Syria, basically, and and Turkey isn't going to go be going in now. There's going to be what I project that might happen is you're going to be seeing increasingly attacks on the U.S. position in that isolated area. That is a vast. So area. then, what are we going to do? Put the troops back in to fight again after they all I, left? I think I think what might happen, just like what what is what happened before when uh, Turkey said, "Hey, we're coming in." You also pull them out. I think that could happen. Pull our troops out. Pull our troops out. Pull those, completely. Pull the pull one thousand or whatever that's yeah, left yeah, there. Yeah, pull them out. But Trump just said no. If somebody tries to take the oil, we're going to fight you. What are we going to fight him with? But, camels. But but he's also being contradictory. He doesn't want to have another war. He doesn't want us in Syria. So he's going to make up his mind. So it's not up to Trump, man. The Lord say these are the weapons of his warfare, man. Okay, these are the these are the weapons of his armory, man. And when you read uh, Proverbs 21 and 1, it reads, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, so the Lord turns their heart whithersoever he will, man. Okay? It's not up to them, man. This is the lowest movie, man. Okay? Now I'm going to play this right here. It's showing you what's going on around the world, man. Why you people sit around on social media, Instagram, and Facebook, man? Babylon the Great is collapsing, man. We are obliged to report that protests have heated up around the world. We start in Haiti, 42 people killed over the weekend as Haitians continue to take to the streets to protest. The president, they say, is corrupt and many say is a U.S. puppet. Now to Iraq. The protesters are breaching the green zone, the area established by the U.S. military as a safe zone that regular Iraqis are not supposed to enter. The protests are rooted in long-standing grievances over poor governance, official corruption, lack of economic opportunity that the U.S. featured 
since the U.S. invasion in 2003. And in Hong Kong, scores of people have been injured. One is in critical condition. At least 12 police officers had to be treated for injuries as the protests turned riotous. Once again over the weekend, Beijing continues to accuse the U.S. of being behind the protest, while the U.S. says the problem has more to do with Beijing's policies. Hmm. But here's the big international story today. It may have more to do with Syria. Large countries have always found ways to co-op or simply steal the natural resources of smaller countries. The Dutch did it, the British, the Spanish, the Japanese. Others have all done it historically, and in the last century, it has been us, our country, the U.S., who has shown <laughs> for, let's say, resource depletion. Usually it's done under the guise of security or pretending to help a country by giving them loans they really can't pay back. But President... So I just want to, hey, Lord willing, edifying man. Got to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, who well, who teach well. And the sense of salutation to all the oxen pushing his truth and believing his truth throughout the four ends of the earth. The entire world working up to hopefully let. Shalom to the Akwa for our listening and learning. The few sisters. Who are listening and learning. Hey, till next time, Lord willing, Shalom.